Around midnight on September 3rd, 1986, Doug Wells and his wife Kristen were pulling onto their street in western Montana when they noticed a camper parked in front of their house. Neither of them recognized the camper, and so when they pulled into their driveway, Doug got out and walked over and looked inside to see if anyone was in there. And there was, there was a man sleeping in the front seat. Doug didn't wake him up. Instead, he went back to his wife. They talked about it and they decided that this man must have just randomly parked in front of their house and that most likely the next day he would leave. And so the couple went inside their house and they began getting ready for bed. At some point, Doug rounded up all the trash inside of the house and was going to bring it outside to put into the trash bin. And when he went outside, standing in his front lawn is the same guy who was just sleeping inside of the camper. And so Doug very cautiously goes down the front steps and he yells out to the guy and says, you know, what are you doing here? And immediately the man put his hands up and said he meant no harm. He said his name was Wayne Nance and he actually worked with Doug's wife, Kristen, at the furniture store in town. Wayne went on to say that he happened to be driving down their street earlier that day and he spotted someone standing outside one of their windows looking in their house and he knew it was Kristen's house and he looked in their driveway and he saw that Kristen wasn't home and it looked like nobody was home and so he decided he would just park out front and try to scare off this person and wait for Kristen to get back. But by the time Kristen got back, he had fallen asleep. Doug was totally caught off guard by this whole situation. The idea that there's this guy on his property talking about another guy that was lurking around his property. And so he asked Wayne, you know, did you see this guy again after that first time you saw him? And Wayne said, no, he hadn't, but he didn't have a flashlight. And so maybe if Doug went in the house and got some flashlights, the two of them could walk the property and make sure nobody was there. Doug thanked him for the offer and said, okay, well, why don't you come in the house and I'll go look for those flashlights. And so Doug led the way inside of his house and as soon as Wayne got in the house and shut the front door behind him he pulled out a metal pipe he was hiding and smashed Doug over the back of the head. Doug turned around and Wayne hit him again over the face and before long the two of them were struggling on the ground. Kristen who was upstairs heard the commotion and she came running down the stairs and she sees at the bottom her husband who's bleeding profusely from his head he's covering himself up on the ground while Wayne her co-worker is standing over him punching and kicking him. Before Kristen could do anything Wayne noticed her up on the stairs and he drew a pistol and aimed it at her and told her to come down here and tie up your husband's arms and legs. Kristen, who's in shock, is just hoping this was just a robbery and that they would have their lives spared. And so she does as she's told. She walks down, Wayne throws her some cord, she ties up her husband's arms and legs, and then afterwards, Wayne leads Kristen back upstairs to the bedroom where he ties her up as well. After that, Wayne went back down to the main floor where Doug was still laying on the ground and he grabbed Doug by the legs and he pulled him down the flight of stairs to the basement where he tied him up to a pole and then he savagely beat him with the pipe before Wayne pulled out an eight inch blade and plunged it directly into Doug's chest all the way in and then when he pulled it out again Doug slumped over. Wayne went back upstairs all the way to the second floor to check on Kristen and he saw she had managed to get partially out of her restraints and she was reaching for the landline and so he jumped on top of her and managed to restrain her all over again and then after he was confident in her restraints he went back downstairs to make sure Doug was dead. When he got down there, he saw Doug was still slouched over in the same position he had left him, and so Wayne assumed Doug must be dead, and Wayne went back upstairs to assault Kristen. But Wayne was wrong. Doug wasn't dead. And after Wayne went upstairs that second time, Doug, despite his horrific head and chest injuries, managed to wriggle out of his restraints and then hobbled over to a workbench where he had a rifle laying out because Doug was actually a gunsmith. And so he took the rifle and he loaded it with the one round he found on the table, and then he walked over to the base of the stairs, he raised his rifle, and he made his way up to the main floor. He didn't come in contact with Wayne, and he looked around the first floor, he didn't see him, and he heard his wife screaming upstairs. And so he made his way to the next set of stairs and began walking up with his rifle raised. At the top of the stairs to the second floor, there was a hallway that ran right and left out of sight. And so as Doug is making his way up, he can hear off to the left, out of view, his wife screaming in the bedroom, and he can hear the sound of very heavy footsteps running down the hall towards the landing where he is. And so Doug positioned himself in the stairwell. He took aim about chest height with his rifle and he waited for their attacker to show himself. And so as soon as Wayne came flying around the corner with his knife in his hand, Doug just fired one shot that struck him right in the stomach. Wayne fell backwards, totally shocked at what had just happened. He began to stagger. And Doug, meanwhile, turned his rifle around like a baseball bat because he didn't have any more rounds. And he just starts walking down the hall, smashing Wayne as Wayne continues to stumble and fall and try to run away from Doug. And finally, he gets away from Doug Doug charges into the bedroom where Kristen is and he grabs his pistol and he turns around and he fires three shots towards the door where Doug is now standing. And Doug, he's unfazed. One round hits him in the leg, the other two miss, he doesn't care. 
he just walks up to Wayne and begins bashing his head in with the back of this rifle. He hits him so many times that the buttstock of the rifle explodes and the metal of the rifle bends like an L. And at some point, Wayne drops the gun because he's getting viciously beaten on by Doug and his rifle. And Doug sees that, he grabs the pistol and he fires the remaining rounds into Wayne's head. Police and paramedics would show up shortly thereafter and Doug, Kristen, and their attacker Wayne were all rushed to the hospital. Doug and Kristen would make full recoveries. As for Wayne, he would die the following day from his injuries. After the incident, the police investigated Wayne Nance to see who this guy was, and they discovered that almost certainly he had been a serial killer that was connected to at least six cold case murders from 1974 to 1986. But because Wayne never confessed to any of these murders before he died, the true number of people he killed is still unknown. So that's 